Hey YouTube, welcome back to part 6 of my Nintendo DS collection. Um, I'm going to try and probably do a few more in this episode just to try and knock out the games. Because we still have the 3DS and whatnot to do, so move these things aside. I actually missed a game um, in the A's. I missed Assassin's Creed. Um, it's a solid enough game. Altair's Chronicles. I think it was like the first DS game. There have been a few. Uh, it's it's kind of like a 2.5D type of platform game that has some of the Assassin's Creed mechanics. It's probably as good as they could have done, uh, given the limitations of the system. But it doesn't really capture that feel of, of the kind of big screen experience. Solid, um, but, you know, nothing remarkable. I picked it up. It's actually kind of hard to get these. Yeah, this was 9.50, but I had store credit, so essentially it was zero as, as on receipt. But it's very hard to get these over here. It rarely turns up into like the CEX um, and GameStop. So when I find it in my local game store, I decided to better pick it up. And I, I love Assassin's Creed, so that's fine. But anyway, um, onwards and upwards. Let's get the stack ready. So we have a stack this big to get through in this version. And we're going to start off with something that's, I think, slightly out of no, I'll do that. Yeah. So we have Sonic, uh, Sonic Chronicles: The Dark Brotherhood. I think this was a Bioware game. Yeah, Bioware in the back of the box. Essentially, this is a Sonic RPG, turn-based RPG, and um, interesting kind of pseudo cell shaded type of graphics. It's it's kind of like you know Sega said, hmm. Mario RPG is really good. Can we do the same with Sonic? It's okay. In some ways, I think it's harder to transpose the kind of gameplay and the, the kind of feel of a Sonic game into an RPG than, than it is to do that with a Mario game. Because Mario games, by their very nature, are slower paced. Whereas Sonic games is all about high speed momentum, kind of momentum based platforming. Uh, you know, it's, it's a solid game. It's it's by Bioware, so it kind of has a certain degree of you know polish that you'd expect. And if you're looking for another RPG in the system, then by all means, it's it's worth a shot. But those kind of looking for the more traditional kind of Sonic gameplay, or you know, kind of carried into an RPG, might be a little disappointed. Having said that, you can usually find this one fairly cheap these days, so it's worth a shot. Um, Next up is, is a game that I got very cheap uh, and kind of for the collection really. It's Sonic's Classics Collection. Four classics in one, so it's Sonic 1, 2, 3 and Knuckles. And to be honest, I don't recall if you're able to do the lock-on in this. I have a feeling you can. Um, they're basically emulation uh, versions of these games. And I have a feeling that the person responsible for the kind of homebrew Mega Drive emulator was, was involved in this game too. Uh, they're not perfect ports by any means. They're definitely not the best uh, handheld experience you can have with regard to Sonic nowadays. I mean, blown away by the Android kind of Sonic 1 and 2 games. And uh, I suppose Sonic 1 classics on uh, 3D classics on the 3DS. But for its time, they're not too bad. And they're certainly a massive, massive improvement over uh, the Game Boy Advance Sonic the Hedgehog uh, Genesis release. Or Mega Drive release. Uh, if you see it cheap, it's worth a chance too. Um, well, it's still on the Sonic. You can tell I like Sonic. You can tell I like Sonic if it's not on camera. Sonic the Hedgehog. It's very fitting that I wore this top for this video. We have Sonic Colors. A relatively late release um, by DS standards. What year is this? Probably 2011, I would have thought. Well, I can't see here. But anyway, it's it's a later Sonic game. Of course, it's the kind of side game to the, the, the Wii U version of if anything, I actually think I might prefer the DS one a little more, but that's not saying much because I'm not a massive fan of the DIMS programmed Sonic games. Uh, as we're going to see in a minute, I may as well bring it up now. We have Sonic Rush and uh, Sonic Colors, and there's a hell of a lot of an overlap in terms of kind of gameplay style and technical uh, capabilities and uh, setup. You've got the dual plane, kind of two screen platforming, and you can go up and down. But I actually feel that the kind of vertical gameplay doesn't really suit Sonic all that well. I mean, when you think about the high speed, you're you're very much left to right, so it's horizontal, and you want a wide screen where possible, especially for the high speeds that you can get in these games. Uh, 
With that said, there are cases where you're kind of going up and down or through the loops of one and that works well. And in Sonic Colors it introduces the colour of power to so try and kind of introduce some more kind of uh, mechanics to the game. Very much like, uh, I, I, was, I would think more like the Mario kind of suits or the Donkey Kong Country animal buddies where you can kind of explore different areas with the tanks to the colours powers. Um, some of them are a bit weak, they're very, you know, kind of situational. Uh, they're not my favourite addition to the Sonic franchise, knocking over games, but they're not too bad. Um, some people are really enjoy these games. I guess they don't quite click with me, but uh, yeah, they're not too bad. They're, Sonic has been in a hell of a lot worse more recently, or so. So you know, they're they're not bad. But I guess I played those. So now I played Sonic Colors after I played Sonic Generations, and Sonic Generations was just brilliant. So Sonic Colors didn't quite capture me in the same way. Well, moving on, and we're talking about a very, very early uh, 3DS game, 3DS, DS game, it's Spider-Man 2, the, presumably based on the movie, this must be 2005. I picked, I think I got this as a present, I didn't pick it up, um, I probably got it around Christmas of the first year that the system was out. Uh, I, I had been interested in it because, after all, Spider-Man 2, um, say the GameCube, the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox, was a tremendous game, it really captured the element of Spider-Man in game form. And this one, it's more of a side-scrolling kind of game. Um, it uses touch touch, country, touch controls where you can press and do kind of more advanced combo moves. And uh, again, it's like a two and a half D scrolling platformer. It's okay. You can tell it has that kind of early. How do we kind of do these platformers? How do we do kind of the three D graphics on the on the DS? Uh, there's definitely better kind of e equivalents. But at the time, I actually thought it was fairly decent. A couple of niggly bits where I thought it was a little cheap. But once you get past them, it's it's fun. It's nowhere near as, as good as Spider-Man 2 on the GameCube, but, but it's fun enough. Uh, <laughs> a game with a lot of history, in my opinion, and that's Star Fox Command. Star Fox Command is... It's obviously, it's, it's a 3D Star Fox shooter game, as you'd expect. Uh, well, no, I say as you'd expect, but of course... You've got Star Fox uh, Adventures, so this is the your more your 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 three D shooter. It's largely controlled pretty much with the touch screen, which works okay. I find I can my hands get a little tired with it. The game itself, I think, it was developed or Dylan Cuthbert or some of the guys from Argonaut Games were involved in the development of this game. And you can so tell because it has a hell of a lot of hallmarks of the Star Fox 2 unreleased game. The kind of strategy components that were brought in. Uh, it's a solid enough entry. Uh, it could, a lot of people kind of criticise it. I actually think it's it's okay. Like, it, it could be better. Uh, but, you know, uh, it's, I think a lot of it comes down to both the mixture of the new strategic components and the touch controls. But if you, if you kind of let that kind of, if you get used to that, I suppose, it's a solid enough experience, and there's there's some fun to be had with it. Not the best Star Fox game, but, you know, any port in a storm these days with the Star Fox franchise. Uh, another space game, and this time it's Star Trek Tactical Assault, and this is, I think, by Bethesda. Uh, let me see your logo somewhere. Yep, Bethesda software on the front, even. So, of course, this was a multi-system release. Um... I was curious how they were going to do it on the DS, and I actually thought, again this would have been probably 2006, an early game, that this type of game might work really well with the touch screen. If you think about it, um, more recently we have something like Steel Diver Subboards where you have the touch panel you know, used to kind of control a more slower, uh, I, I, it's, I guess it's kind of like a first person shooter, or even if it was a third, third person kind of action shooter, but that kind of strategic movement, much slower, much more deliberate movement. And it kind of said, you know, that sounds like it might work, you know, with the Star Trek universe too, where it's not quite, certainly in the original series, the kind of combat wasn't really fast, really intense. It was much more slow paced, much more deliberate. Uh, you know, it's kind of like the antithesis of the Star Wars, which was, you know, very high speed action with the X Wing and whatnot. Um, this is solid enough. It's not a remarkable game by any means, but it does kind of deliver that kind of slower paced uh, gameplay 
I guess they, they do they call it a real time strategy game? Yeah, they do. It's real time strategy combat. I actually found it very hard. I, I really sucked at it. But I, I, for the time frame, I actually thought it was fairly solid. <laughs> Clearly, this game here, uh, it's another uh, Star game, but it's the opposite of Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. A very, very early game. Um, a lot of these early games on the, on the DS, you can tell they had kind of roots in the GBA. Uh, and this one is no exception because it's a combination of well, that kind of two and a half D plane side scroll and beat em up, think Streets of Rage Final Fight. And then there's some 3D kind of flying shooting components, think Rogue Squadron type of gameplay thrown in as well. And it sounded like to me like they had this kind of you know scrolling fighter game kind of in the works. And the 3DS or I keep saying 3DS and the DS was kind of coming out so they wanted to kind of upgrade and, and utilize its capabilities and how can we do that and they had obviously wireless multiplayer and then they had you know the kind of 3D sections in it too. It's 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 fairly okay. Oh, they also have touch screen ones. Of course, you had that. It's it's fairly solid. Like it's it's not the best scrolling fighter ever. It's not the best you know shoot 'em up ever. But it, it's it's solid enough. And for an early title, it was fun. Uh, you know, there isn't actually too many scrolling uh, beat 'em ups on the system. I can't even think of another one off the top of my head. So I guess if you're looking for that type of fix, you know, you can't go too far wrong with Star Wars. Um. Ah, now, my launch game, because I got the system before it launched, this was the only full game I had, and it is Super Mario, I don't know why I had to look at it, Super Mario 64 DS, of course it's Super Mario 64, uh, I mean the goal of this game very much to me was to demonstrate, one, that the DS could do 3D, two, that it had wireless multiplayer, because in, in its kind of early days it was called 64, Mario, Super Mario 64 by 4 because it was like 4 player local multiplayer. Um, three, that you had different options with the, the touch screen because it was lots of mini games thrown in and you could use the touch screen as a kind of replacement for the analog. So there was a lot kind of packed into this in terms of what it was having to do to kind of demonstrate the 3DS or DS's capabilities and, and it's a very solid port. I mean the, it's, it's not as good in terms of feel as the N64 original and the graphics, there, there's some better textures, uh, but it, I don't know, it doesn't quite, weirdly enough, it's not quite as sharp looking as the N64 game, or there's something that doesn't quite click, I think the colours are a bit more muted, they don't have that kind of primary colours that pop, uh, but I really enjoy this, like, uh, Super Mario 64, so, it, you know, it's very hard to completely screw it up. I actually think I ended up playing it largely with the D-pad, because I wasn't too keen on the thumb, they actually had this little thumb strap, with a little thumb pad thing that used to come with the DS and you could use that. I didn't quite get into that. I think my wife actually played it with the stylus in completion so it just shows you there's different ways to go about it. It's a good game and even some of the mini games were good fun. To be honest, uh, yeah, highly recommended you as long as you like 3D platform and you gotta get it. And for some reason I happen to have two versions. One that obviously came with the system and one that I must have got in a trade or I got in a car boot or something. This must be an English version because it only has the UK flag at the back and some English stuff. So I'm not really sure why this differs from this. I pres like presumably this is a European general release and this is UK specific. If anyone can tell me more about this, I'd, I'd be pleased to know. No, oh, we're getting there. One of the, one of my favourites on a system. It's a, it's an oldie but a goodie type of thing. Tetris DS, the first Tetris game on the system, and. It's completely infused with Nintendo, with the, as they call it, they said Tetris with the Nintendo Switch. Damn right, because it's so, everything is styled around Mario, Zelda, all the 8-bit Nintendo graphics. There's basically different modes, different types of Tetris challenges, and each one is represented by a different franchise. So there's Metroid, Donkey Kong, Zelda, Mario, Mario being the more traditional one. It also features 10-player uh, local play, I think it might even have online, doesn't it have online? Yeah, Wi-Fi connection. This is a, an absolutely brilliant, brilliant version of Tetris. It, so long as you like Tetris, you gotta, gotta play this. It's so good. Uh, the gameplay of Tetris is, is basically ageless. It's not that far removed from the PC, you know, NES, Game Boy versions of, of old. Uh, other than the kind of hold piece and the kind of infinite spin, which caused some controversy. 
but that doesn't matter. It's it's still as timeless as ever. It just hit, you know, I can't recommend this highly enough. My arm's getting tired, so we better start working through these. Uh, Team Park, I guess what's old is new again, just like Super Mario 64 and Tetris. Um, this is a, a port of the PC classic, Bullfrog game. Um, they did a good job. As soon as you kind of heard about this, you kind of thought, I, did, I think I did Populous in, in another game. And I think there's a same city. The stylus, of course, makes a lot of sense. Now, the one thing that does hamper this type of game is that the resolution and the size of the screen is relatively low. So it can be hard to have that kind of quick, you know, overview and grabbing the right piece that you want or whatever. But you can adjust the game speed and whatnot, so it works out fairly well. It's not perfect, uh, given that limitation, but for a portable, it definitely plays well. And Team Park is, is timeless, it really is. It's, it's a great game, and just fun for... Like, to me, I was, all, I was never good at this. Ever, ever, ever. So, uh, my game would consist of basically building the first park and running it into the ground and going broke. Uh, but I always just like building the park and seeing what happens. Uh, it's a good, fun game. And basically, it works on the TS. Uh, so, we're actually getting to stuff that I don't have too much experience in. Uh, Trans Transformers Autobots, one of, I think there's quite a number of Transformers games. Basically this is kind of like a 3D, sort of like action game. Rudimentary, it's, to me it seems like a kind of run of the mill. If you took out the Transformers uh, license, it could be any kind of mechy action game. I know that there's a kind of duality because there's like, there's Autobots version and there's a Decepticon version. I don't really know the difference, uh, but this one on the back of the box says Protect, so presumably the, other, or the, the Decepticons says Destroy or something, I don't know. If you're a big Transformers fan, I guess maybe it might um, appeal to you. It actually, it actually says Transformers Decepticons also available. Does it say what's the difference? No, it doesn't. Presumably this one you just play as uh, Autobots and the other one Decepticons. Ooh, that stack is just after class. So, the last kind of good game then, we have Worry Where Touched, and of course this is another early game and really kind of demonstrated the type of gameplay experiences you could get with a touchscreen. Why you were doesn't need too much introduction, lots and lots of micro games, very very quick, uh, tap this, you know, swipe across the screen, you know, all sorts of touch based motion basically. Um, it's funny, there's a fair bit of story and, and whatnot, and, you know, in this, and it's kind of like, what a lot of filler, I mean, really, it's just get to the mini games. that's what it's all about, you just want to go, 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 because it's, it's fast-paced, it's, it's one of those things where the, the Wario games, as good as they are, they don't never really strike me as a full price game, because they're micro games, I guess, but they're fun, but it, it kind of, it's something that I would play for maybe 15 minutes, and then put aside for something else. It's, it's certainly a game that you should pick up on the DS because it, it, it is kind of that fun, quick burst of fun. How many times can I say fun for WarioWare? But uh, back in the day when it was full priced, I actually waited because I had a demo of this. And the demo was pretty much enough. It captured enough of the essence of that kind of quick high score challenge. And then I could put on Mario 64 or something else. Uh, but yeah, these days you can pick it up cheap and it's definitely recommended. And finally... Who wants to be a millionaire? Go out with a winner, why don't I? Uh, who wants to be a millionaire? What can you really say about it? It's an okay version. There's 2,000 questions. If you like millionaire, I guess you like this, but that's all there is. It's millionaire. Um, so there we go. That was my DS games. Now, I'm not too sure if I'll do a hardware with, you know, bits of hardware I have, but I'll certainly do a 3S, well, 3DS system too, so um, keep an eye out for that. But anyway, Hope you enjoyed this look at my DS Games collection and stay tuned for future videos from me. Bye for now.